If you thought the term assault weapon wasn't misleading enough, good news. Billionaire funded anti-gun think tanks have spent tons of money coining the newest term to scare those who are uneducated on firearms. What is this spicy new term you ask? Well, it's weapons of war. And someone needs a weapon of war. With. We should take weapons of war. Weapons of war. We shouldn't have weapons of war on our streets. Hey guys, I'm Tiffany, and this is One in the Chamber, the show where we break down ridiculous anti-gun arguments to help you become a better informed firearms activist. Whenever the anti-gun machine springs into action, whether after a national tragedy or a recorded spike in gun violence, often the conversation shifts to banning certain firearms. Communities by weapons of war. Oh, weapons of war. Ban weapons of war. Weapons of war. Weapons of war. Weapons of war. As many of you well know, there's been a coordinated effort over the past 19 years, or since the federal assault weapons ban expired on September 13, 2004, to ban guns. In an effort to demonize these types of firearms, the term weapons of war was cooked up, apparently because the assault weapon wasn't effective enough. Now we hear politicians and even the president using weapons of war to call for another ban on regular, commonly owned semi-automatic rifles. But is the AR-15 a weapon of war? In short, no. For those unfamiliar with the AR-15, it is by far the most popular civilian-owned rifle in the United States. And in fact, nearly every manufacturer in the firearms industry produces their own version of the AR-style rifle. Most gun owners in the United States own AR-15s as well. According to the Washington Post, about 1 in 20 U.S. adults own at least one AR-15-style rifle. That's about 16 million people. And of those who do own one, the Washington Post also found that 8% of AR-15 owners do not own their firearm for self-defense. So that means 92% of AR-15 owners do own their firearms for self-defense. A survey commissioned by Winchester found that 75% of all hunters currently use a modern sporting rifle, or what I like to call commonly owned self-defense rifles, the AR-15 is also often used in self-defense. Just take the case of an eight-month pregnant woman in Florida who defended herself and her husband against two attackers with her AR-15. There's a ton more examples of people defending their loved one with this so-called evil assault rifle. So with all that in mind, why are anti-gun politicians so adamant that the AR-15 is a weapon of war? Well, first off, while we've already established that the AR-15 is not a weapon of war, it's a popular rifle used by everyday Americans for hunting, defense, and recreational shooting, the AR-15 was and always will be a civilian product first. The M16 is just a full auto adoption of Stoner's AR-15 design. These same people like to point to the fact that the AR-15 has similar features to the military-only version. Things like a pistol grip or adjustable stock are usually points of contention. But the M16 is restricted to military and law enforcement because it has full auto capability. And while civilians can own fully automatic rifles, they're limited to expensive pre-86 transferable machine guns that are ever increasing in value and scarcity. So when anti-gun politicians and activists refer to weapons of war, what they're really saying is the AR-15 and similar rifles look like they're used by military. Should we ban rifles because they look like they're used by the military? By that logic, we'd be banning most firearms in existence. At one point, a version of most commonly owned rifles saw some sort of military service, from bolt-action rifles to revolvers. No one wants to ban the semi-auto M1 Grand or the Winchester trench gun, even though both firearms were used in World War II. But saying that a rifle looks like it's used by the military isn't as effective, scary, or hyperbolic as saying weapons of war. Let's not forget, the musket was once a weapon of war, as was the pointy stick or sharp rock. Under the most recent assault weapon ban passed by House Democrats, they failed to cover the M1 Grand, the literal American serviceman's standard rifle for World War II. So the next time you're asked, why should the average citizen be allowed to own a weapon of war? The answer should be, so they don't lose a fight. Thanks for watching the first episode of One in the Chamber. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and family. I'll see you next time.